Hey, welcome back. That was the hangout. I can tell by that expression something went down. Hey, absolutely, we can talk about it. What's up? What happened? Someone requested your assistance on something and they blew up at you, huh? Is it okay if I know what the request was about? Ah, computer tech support. Let me guess. You informed them their computer's hardware does not meet the specs for the apps that they want to run. Upon hearing that, they became irate and belligerent, trying to claim you don't know what you're talking about, right? I figured as much. That's the typical response from folks stuck in delusion. They tried to say you jinxed them for telling them reality. So then after so many back and forths of trying to share the cheapest options possible for the same results, they just became more irate and more disrespectful. Did I hit it on the head? Good move. If they don't want to listen to solid reasoning, then there's no point in continuing the conversation. How they take being told off. They started crying. You must have hit them with some serious reality check. Plus, it sounds like their skin is not very thick to begin with. Ultimately, they messed around and found out. Oh gosh, white knighting is the worst. It's not necessarily wrong that you told them off, especially when it's the truth and the motive was to help them realize the actual issue. My only observation is there are some cases where telling off folks of that mindset is likely to go through one ear and out the other, or they can become more irate and just lash out. So in many cases, it's not worth wasting your energy and just let them cook while you're in a safe location. Their friends wanted you to be patient with that individual who was basically bad-mouthing you. What level of patience did they want? Wait, hold up. Their friends are claiming you were being too harsh on this individual that was bad-mouthing you about your competency of computers simply because you would not formulate a scenario that does not exist to yield the desired results within their cheapskate favor. Question, did their friends ever intervene when this person was wiling out? So they wanted someone who was getting badgered by their friend to be patient with them while they were displaying very little to no level of humanly respect towards someone who not only has a better computer setup than them, but also knows how to build, maintain, and fix such equipment. But you, in some way, shape, or form, are the jerk for standing up for yourself and refusing to be disrespected by a bunch of diarrhea coming out of the wrong hole from another. Oh boy, human society is doomed. Human society has come to a point where they refuse to tame a specific element of themselves until it's too late. Feelings are indeed a major part of the issue, but what I'm referring to in particular is attitude. Yeah, our attitude will determine whether we will reach success or disaster and you know what the sad part is? A lot of people know they have a poor attitude, but to wear that on their arm sleeve would make them look like a complete jackass. So they mask it with excuses such as ignorance and frustration. You're absolutely right. No matter how bad of an issue we're going through, that in no way, shape, or form gives us the right to treat people who had nothing to do with those negative impacts like an enemy. And then there are those who counter-argue with the question, Do you really think they would do that if they knew the answers or they knew better? Well, the answer to that is, it depends on their mental state. Delusion is a term that exists for a reason. 
Ah, so they pulled the imperfection card. It sounds like that was just an attempt to stop you from holding the individual accountable for their actions. They're using that statement out of the original context. The fact that no one is perfect and we make mistakes is not designed to provide complete immunity from consequences. It does establish a level of mercy to consider, but even then that mercy is to be earned through genuine effort of improvement. Accountability is designed to maintain order and keep our egos in check. To which, this person, if they did not know it before, they know it now. By consequence, that some people will call them out on their misconduct, just like a cornered animal. Apparently, this person has shown themselves to be part of the group that only respects imminent consequences. Yes, by their actions, they only respect imminent consequences, not potential consequences, but consequences that will materialize and there is no point of return. The only time they stopped with their badgering is when you took a stand, and they clearly were not ready for that. This is why I argue that the issue is more about attitude than it is ignorance. Plus, with the availability of information in the 21st century, there is very little room for excuse. People who may be incompetent can be worked with when their attitude is of humility and a desire to learn. The others who operate with entitlement and snarkiness, it's going to take them a number of reality checks to pull their heads out of where the sun doesn't shine. The look on your face advice is that you are wondering why so many try to avoid accountability. Many people these days just don't like it. They find accountability extremely inconvenient, more inconvenient than misconduct itself. Even with this person, one of two things are likely to happen after the experience with you. One, they will reconsider their actions and make reasonable adjustments, or two, they will just pick another target. Considering the behavioral patterns displayed by their friends, I suspect the latter is going to happen, which furthermore confirms situations like this to be an attitude problem and not a competency problem. And to put it all on the table, some of this is also the result of how bystanders have responded to them in the cases when they try to own up to their own faults and apply correction. Excessive condemnation can be just as dangerous as excessive leniency. Ah, yes. Excessive condemnation is the act where either the one affected or bystanders continuously shun, ridicule, and shame the party in question beyond the cease of the threat, and even when the host in question is at the stage of seeking correction. This is also a serious problem in society as the common narrative presented in today's culture is punishment, punishment, punishment. Cancel culture, anyone? There is no consideration of any form of rehabilitation. I take it you gave the individual several chances through your respectful warnings for them to cease the offenses. Well, if they kept going and disregarded your warnings and demands for a cease and desist of what then became harassment, then they earned the response that they got. They don't necessarily have a problem with you. They actually have a problem with reality. The only problem they have with you is you are associated with reality. And it'll be the same for anyone else associated with it. Your diligence and respect for reality reminds them of the foolishness surrounding their recklessness. It does not help at all that truth and reality have been given unreasonable observations over the years. Things like truth hurts and what is the natural response to anything that is defined as being painful without a clear perception of benefit. Right. People will just stay away from it. The only element actually getting us hurt is our ego. It surprised me too when it first clicked in my mind. Now understand this, I'm only addressing the issue surrounding our ego and recklessness. I'm not talking about scenarios such as natural tragedies and the like. That's another issue among us in society. Some of us, when met with an analogy that edifies reality, they pull extreme scenarios and try to make the exceptions to the rule the actual rule or the exception, the reason to abolish the rule completely. 
It doesn't work like that. And what does that all come down to? Attitude. That's why there's so much drama. That's why there's so much chaos. Oh, yes, indeed, it can be fixed. Of course, like any remedy, there are requisites. Requisite number one, abandon all ego. That does not mean allowing ourselves to be abused. That is a common extremity cop out, and it's uncalled for. They know what it actually means. They just don't want to follow it. Again, attitude. Requisite number two, we get with the program of reality. We are not going to get functional results with dysfunctional efforts, and that includes delusion. One of the biggest necessities within us, we need to heal from our past wounds. This is the main element that's driving poor attitudes. Another element that often drives it is the desire to be comforted and coddled. That does have its place, and we are human and need such comforting, but it does not override requisite number one. There is a difference between seeking assistance with encouragement in order to grow in maturity, and then there's just plain enabling. One big thing, stop trying to get ourselves fixed by broken people. Now, what does that mean? You cannot get back on the road of maturity when you are being guided by people of reckless mindsets. Yes, and you know what? Some people actually like the amount of dysfunction that's going on. There is a portion of them because it helps them blend their own dysfunction, and then some others, it's profitable. Oh yeah, there are folks out there, some right in our own backyard, who are profiting from dysfunction. I'm going to go ahead and say it. Pharmaceuticals, governments, even some of our own peers. Now let's be clear. It's the human beings within those structures causing the issue, not the structures themselves. And you want to have another mind blower? We're allowing that to happen. By neglecting our own health and wanting an easy way out instead of learning how to better take care of ourselves, pharmaceuticals make billions because of our recklessness. Insurance companies, lawyers, and private prison owners, and even investors make billions. Because of our selfishness and willingness to go against our peers just because they don't agree with us and fight for laws that could ultimately one day apply to us to be the non-prevailing party, guess what? Unrealistic-minded politicians get to stay in that office because those people of the same mindset vote to keep them in there. They make promises to the groups of people whose issues are the latest trend to get their vote. Those who are voting for it, not realizing or just disregarding the reality that that cost will happen later on. And don't take my word for it. See it for yourself. And it all can be traced back to one mental condition. Attitude. This is why reckless-minded people try to mask it with the common smoke and mirrors. Ignorance, age, sex, etc. All we can do is share the information with those who are interested in growing in maturity. Those who are not, sad to say, but you just got to let them cook. At the end of the day, you did what you should have, and that's all we should be doing. It could have been a lot worse too, but you did what was best. And you found out what you can do better, so that way you'll be even more efficient next time. I'd say it's been some heavy conversation today, and it's getting late. So I'd say it's time for us to get some rest. Unless you want to bench through some anime for a while. <laughs> All right, then. You pick the show, I'll get the popcorn. <laughs>